At the beginning of last year, I knew I wanted to improve my financial situation. The writing was on the wall. We were in the longest bull market ever in the United States. Everybody was talking about the 2020 recession, and I just felt a really intense need to get a $10,000 emergency fund set up before anything went crazy. I just knew that I could rest a lot easier. I'd be able to take bigger risks with my business and in my life if I had a cushion to fall back on. So I knew I wasn't gonna get where I wanted to get financially, which was this savings goal this emergency fund if I didn't have a clear picture of what I was making every month and what I was spending. I should mention that I was running a marketing agency at this point and so my income would fluctuate quite a bit. Some months were really high, some months weren't as high and I didn't have like a specific paycheck that I got every single month. So I decided to start tracking my finances literally every single day. Now I should say there are a lot of apps that can do this for you. There's plenty of people that use those apps, but I knew that I needed to do it manually or else I would just be pretending that I knew what was going on when in reality I had no clue. So for starters, let's talk about the how. I'm a big proponent of the KISS method in life. Keep it simple, stupid. So I just decided to make a Google sheet and name it numbers in all caps. I had four different tabs in the sheet. One was for personal, one was for business, one was for savings, and another one was for tithing. Just a little bit of background on that last one. I pay 10% of my income to my church every month. Anyway, so once I created these four tabs, I needed a simple way to track everything. So I just made a few columns. The date, the amount of cash I brought in, the amount of cash I spent that day, and also a memo or a note describing how I made that money or how I spent that money. If I'm looking back and I see a random $50 charge, I can say, oh, that's when I spent $50 on a pedicure. Just kidding, I, I don't get pedicures. So it's really that simple. That's what the business and the personal ones look like. And again, the genius behind this is the simplicity. The savings tab was a little bit different since I wasn't planning on pulling anything out of my emergency fund anytime soon. It just had a cash in column and then a date column. Uh, in the tithing tab, if you're interested, I literally just had one column that said what, like what did you make that money from, the date, how much money it was, and then a very, very complex formula that calculates 10% of how much money that was. It's important to note that although the tabs did start out this way, they've evolved to fit my needs over time. For example, in the first two months, I wasn't separating the expenses by month. They were just all in the same tab. It started to get really annoying to scroll down that far, and so I decided to create a tab for each month. So I now have a March personal tab, a business personal tab, an April personal tab, an April business tab. And I'll go all the way through the rest of this year and then create another sheet for 2021. So I also wanted to get to the point where I had a budget. Yeah, I should probably mention that I don't really have a budget. Don't tell my mom, but I haven't really found a need for it just yet. Hi mom. I'm trying to figure out a monthly number for each of my expenses that doesn't make me feel like I'm depriving myself of things that I can actually enjoy, but that also encourage me to live frugally. And once I have those numbers, I'll create and stick to a budget. So anyway, because I want to eventually create a budget, what I started to do was not only record what I was spending and making each day, but also recording each expense in a category. Say it was April 15th and I spent $50 on a pedicure. I mean, I spent $50 on groceries. Then I would also go to the groceries column and put a negative 50 in there to record how much I spent on groceries. Categorizing my expenses has really helped me to cut back in certain areas and understand where most of my money is going. This part is super helpful and I would definitely recommend doing it from the beginning. So now that you have the how, let's talk about what this experience taught me and why literally everyone on earth should do this. I honestly believe that. Unless you live on the island of Yap where they trade stones for currency, I'm not sure how this would help you. I'm not really familiar with Yappies economics, you'd have to consult somebody in your own country. The first thing that tracking my finances every day helped me to do is save more money. I cannot overstate the importance of the peace of mind that I felt even during the worldwide shutdown because of how much money I had saved and because I knew what my financial status was. Instead of panic, I felt a lot of peace. I made a career transition to go full-time on YouTube, which without that $10,000, I wouldn't have been confident enough to do. It's definitely helping me weather the first few low-income months of starting a new business. Secondly, it's really helped me manage my expenses, mostly business expenses. It's just really easy to get on recurring subscription these days, especially when they go on the business card. And since I track things daily, as soon as the charge 
charge comes through, I can either cancel it for the next month if I don't need it, or I can request a refund before the payment is completely processed. Thirdly, tracking my finances every day has given me a lot of confidence that I didn't have before. When I went out to eat before, I would always like subconsciously feel bad about it because I didn't know how much money I was actually bringing in. Or at other times I would feel like I have so much money coming in, I could go out to eat every meal and I'd still have plenty and I would be able to keep saving. Having a clear picture of how much I make and how much I spend every day has helped me not feel bad about one-time purchases that might be a little bit expensive or going out to eat a couple times a week. And lastly, this habit has helped me heal my relationship with money. Basically what I mean to say here is that I used to have a very scarce mindset. I thought money was really, really hard to make. It was really, really hard to keep around and all I should do with it is save, save, save. But it's funny because at the same time, I also felt this invulnerability towards ever being totally destitute. I know because of my family and where I grew up that I'll always have a roof over my head, I'll always have enough food. So ironically, on one hand, I feel like all I should do is save, and on the other hand, I feel like I want to enjoy life, so I shouldn't not spend money. Both of these together just make for a really bad relationship with money. Because when you save it, you feel bad for not enjoying your time and your money, and when you spend it, you feel bad for not saving it. It's just a really big lose-lose. However, when you have a clear picture of your finances, you can say, I have enough money to buy this thing. I've reached my savings goal for the month. I should treat myself and not have any guilt over it. To explain a little further, let me tell you a small story. Let's imagine that there is a caveman named George and you come up to George and you give him some money and you say, hey George, you can trade this money for things that you want. But you also tell him, you say, hey look, George, if you wanna make more money, you have to go to school for four years and then you have to get something called a job. That's where you go in and you work for somebody else and then they pay you because of the time that you spent helping them grow their business. And if you get a good enough job, then you can put your extra money somewhere where it will make you even more money. But sometimes it won't make you more money, it will actually lose money depending on things like world events and other stuff that we don't really understand. Do you think George is going to understand what money is? Basically the idea is this, our caveman brain, also known as the limbic system, has a hard time grasping the idea of money. It doesn't understand fully how we can get it and how we can use it to survive and thrive. It's a pretty abstract concept and there is literally no one who has a completely objective view of it. Add credit cards, bank accounts, stock markets, and pandemics to the mix and nobody really knows what's going on. Spending more time helping your brain see the cause and effect relationships between your happiness, your well-being, and your income and expenditures will help you create a healthier relationship with money. A relationship where you see money as a tool that you can use to get what you want instead of something that you're secretly scared of inside. And one other thing that I should definitely mention is that tracking my finances has also motivated me to track a lot of other things in my life. I've started tracking things like sleep and other work habits to keep myself motivated, which has made a world of difference. Anyways, this was my life-changing experience with tracking my finances every single day. It's something that you should definitely do. I've actually created a free shareable Google Sheet and prettied it up a little bit for you guys so you can end up using my same system if it works for you. Link in description. Thanks again so much for stopping by the channel. I would love to hear your thoughts on this video, this background, benefits of tracking your finances that I didn't mention, or other things that you do to make sure that you're financially stable, especially in these turbulent times. Thanks again so much and I'll see you in the next video.